The irony of holidays like Halloween and Dia de los Muertos that are meant to remind us of our impermanence, the thin veil between life and death, and that our dead are amongst us, is that many of us, because of who we are, black and brown, women and femmes, queers or the undocumented, are haunted by the possibility of death every day, particularly in this political moment when the state and power has blatantly marked us as disposable. We're here at Citlatlin Gallery in Pilsen, a Mexican-American and immigrant neighborhood. Anyone that grew up here likely has stories of family or friends lost to factors like gang violence or police brutality. But right now, all across Chicago, neighborhoods like Pilsen are haunted by their own death as gentrification marks our communities for death and a heavenly neoliberal afterlife of pearly gates or art galleries, craft breweries, condos, and maybe an Obama Center. Gentrification wants to leave nothing of us but a spectral trace of our presence and struggles. Under these conditions, it is important we remember our dead and that we fight for our dead. The guilty verdict of Jason Van Dyke for the murder of Laquan McDonald shows us what's possible when individuals insist on honoring our dead. I want everyone in this room to conjure in your mind one person dead because of injustice that you will be fighting uh, for to make this a better world. For me, tonight, it is Natasha Howlett and Perry Burrell. Both were former students of mine during a brief stint as an English teacher at a charter high school where I was eventually fired, if you could believe it, for refusing to practice creative censorship. Natasha was a mother of two and shot at a bus stop 10 years ago. Perry was shot at a stop sign. Perry was shot at a stop sign in West Garfield Park three years and two days from today on October 25th, 2015. He was visiting from Madison where he moved for, where he had moved for the, where he had moved and was coming back for the 10 year memorial of the shooting of his brother, Kayvon. Perry was a brilliant comedian, rapper, and poet. He was also hyperactive as fuck and I started letting him perform in our class at the beginning of the day to release his hyperactivity. I remember the first poem he ever performed by heart. If you ain't ever lost nobody, you don't know how it feels. Nightmares in the middle of the night got me ready to kill. Mama stressed out, doctor trying to give her a pill. If you ain't ever lost a brother, you don't know how it feels. In this city, death is all around us. I remember when Perry died, a friend of mine consoled me by saying he's with the ancestors now. Black and brown woke culture has included decolonization of religion so that it's commonplace to hear the phrase, pray to your ancestors. To me, so often this is used to figure our ancestors like fairy godmothers waiting to grant our wishes and isn't much different from the way Western Christianity encourages prayer to God when we want something. But these days, I believe, given the injustice and oppression that sends so many of us to the other side that our ancestors are not supposed to be there for us, we are here right now for them to remember and fight for them to bring the life to the world they were denied because if radical change requires we center the most marginalized, I wanna say that no one is more marginalized than the dead. Uh -huh. Uh -huh.